many other animals can surround themselves with calcium carbonate. And if they are part of the reef or the aquatic environment where the limestone will form, then their exoskeleton also then contributes to limestone. Many echinoderms, for example, uh, produce calcium carbonate. Um, and certain limestones are known as crinoidal limestones if crinoids uh, are present uh, in the limestone and help contribute to it. Foraminiferins are microscopic protists which make uh, calcium carbonate shells around themselves. Not only can they contribute to limestones, uh, but some limestones, including the famous Indiana limestone, which has been so important as a building material uh, for structures in the United States, are primarily made of fossil foraminiferins. Many other organisms uh, may not be the major components of a limestone, but nevertheless produce calcium carbonate, which then contributes to the formation of the limestone. Uh, this would include sponges, both of the uh, group of sponges alive today, and extinct sponges, such as the archaeocyathens in the uh, Cambrian period and the stromatoporoid uh, sponges. Uh, bryozoans are small colonial animals which can surround themselves in calcium carbonate. Um, brachiopods are a form of shellfish uh, which was uh, mostly dominant in the Paleozoic era uh, which made shells of calcium uh, carbonate. Small arthropods known as ostracods can make uh, shells of calcium carbonate and can be important in limestones in freshwater. Some algae, some red algae, some green algae, and a largely extinct group of algae known as the coccolithophores, uh, these uh, algae uh, can contribute calcium carbonate. And calcium carbonate could accumulate uh, in stromatolites as well, formed by bacteria. And so then even the Precambrian era can have limestones uh, if stromatolites contributed to it.